NATO, building an offensive nuclear missile capacity around Russia, taking the former states of the Soviet Union and bringing them into NATO. The last one now, which remains, I think Ukraine, there's still some tussle going on, but Georgia is the one they're trying to get. And so we can now comfortably lean back and relax because we know what's coming ahead. It's going to be a Star Wars confrontation between Russia on the one hand and its allies, which refuses to submit to someone ruling the world from Jerusalem and therefore re refuses to submit to the Anglo-American-Israeli alliance of the West. And this side with, a, with an obstinate, pig-headed, irrational determination, we will have to impose our rule over Russia, regardless of consequences. And this leads to the confrontation, the Star Wars conflict, which is coming ahead of us. And that Star Wars conflict, when it takes place, will be mutually destructive. And when it is mutually destructive, when nuclear weapons are used on such a mass scale, I think it is not far-fetched for us to believe that the capacity for electronic warfare will de will cease. And so it's horses once more. <laughs> it's horses once more. It's conventional warfare once more. And Israel had been set up by the European Jewish Christian Alliance, set up. And now Banu Israel are left defenseless to face the army of Islam. It is at that time when Gog and Magog are gone, when Dajjal has been killed, that Allah's words will be remembered. Why not? If you come back to the Holy Land with your wickedness and oppression, I will return with my punishment. And so a Muslim army now attacks and destroys this imposter state of Israel. At that time, said Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam, لَتُقَاتِلُنَّ الْيَهُودِ I quoted this hadith at the State University of New York in Stony Brook with the Jews sitting in front of me. And they went and they complained to the head of the university. I said, what did I do? If I don't have the freedom to quote the Quran and the Hadith, I might as well go and plant peace. Where is your freedom? <laughs> you will most certainly fight the Jews. You will most certainly kill them. At that time even, the stones will speak. Because the stones will have a higher sense of morality <laughs> than those stones which inhabit their hearts. At that time even the stones will speak. Ya Muslim, O Muslim, has a Yahudi and Wara'i Fata'ala Faktul. There's a Jew hiding behind me. So come and kill him. Not all Jews. No. Because there will be other Jews who will be with us. Standing up to face an Israeli tank. Giving their lives. In standing up to oppression. So not all Jews. No. Muhammad is talking about the Jew. Who is the agent of oppression. 
this is the one. There's a Jew hiding behind me, so come and kill him. We are now able, therefore, to offer, and all that we're doing is offering a preliminary opinion of identifying God and Magar in terms of the centers of power, not individual. Don't ask me for names, because we have God and Magar in Egypt as well now. And I'm reliably informed that Gog and Magog in Islamabad, in Pakistan as well. And you have Gog and Magog all over the world. So don't ask for names. We now are in a position to offer what can best be described as a preliminary opinion, which is now subject to the critical examination by the Ummah, by the scholars. And a scholar would not take this book and refute it rip it apart by simply searching where can I find a little crack in it that's not scholarship a scholar will go through it and see what is there in this which convinces me that it is the truth and what is there in this where my brother may have fallen short in his analysis or may have erred and then would respectfully offer an opinion to correct something where I may have gone wrong. That's scholarship. So now we have completed our explanation of the subject of Gog and Magog. It's probably the first time that this kind of an explanation has been offered in our history as an Ummah. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us if we have heard and to kindly increase for us our knowledge of the subject. We now have half an hour. Uh, and in this half an hour, we can take subjects on Gog and Magog and also on the previous um, subject of the feminist revolution. Are you ready with the um, microphone? Yes, Yusuf. Please keep the mic close to you so I can hear. I'm an old man now. I actually have a two-part question. Uh, the first, uh, is it reasonable to assume that when the Prophet wasallam said, Arab, that he was talking about the Semitic Arab as well as the linguistic Arab, the one that uh, holds the Quran dear and continues to recite it and so forth? And also, when it's referred to in the hadith that the uh, smoke will come and kill everybody, but it only gives the believers a, a coat or a runny nose, could it be assumed that this is because the true believers would have uh, foresaw what was coming and, be, and uh, were so far removed from the major cities where this stuff would take place that, it, that the pollution didn't get to them? We have a problem of acoustics here. You may be able to hear him properly, but for me there's an echo. So I didn't catch all that he said, and we're going to be wasting time if you have to repeat a question over and over and over again for me to be able to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, could you come close up to me? Yeah. Sisters, um, in fact, better if you could just write out your questions quickly. That saves us time. Yeah.